to create a pp plot in excel first we have to um, sort this data from smallest to uh, largest uh, before i do anything i would like to create a id column for each of these data set because in case if i have to go back to the original data uh, I can sort back based on ID to go back. Now I would like to sort it based on the um, the actual data from smallest to highest. Carbon dioxide is smallest to highest. Sort the data. Then the next thing I need to do is to set rank for each of these data. Um, so they are uh, smallest to highest. Um, so based on their uh, the size of the data uh, this is the rank then once I get the rank I need to find out the plotting position the plotting uh, position is calculated by the formula rank minus 0.5 divided by the sample size I have so the rank so I can type that formula is equal use a parenthesis rank minus 0.5 close the parenthesis divide by the sample size now sample size I know there are 120 data points but we can use a function called count to count all the numeric data I have on B so like that I'm going to format this cell up to two decimal points so I can see uh, maybe I need to do a little bit more four decimal points so now I can see that so this is the plotting positions uh, cumulative plotting positions so that um, goes from 0 to 100 or uh, in probability 0 to 1. Now if I want to see whether this data is normally distributed or not, I will have to create an expected data set from a normal distribution. So expected from a normal distribution. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a data set uh, similar to this emission data set, but this time it will come from a, a normal uh, uh, distribution. Um, and then I can compare uh, this data which was my observed data in the field I can rename this as uh, observed data and then I can plot that with that my expected um, what if this data uh, is normally distributed what is the value associated with that so to calculate value from a normal distribution I need mean value so I can type the mean average of the data set this one and then I need the standard deviation stdev stdev and then parenthesis select that it's a quite big sample size so whether you calculate for uh, the sample or for um, um, population that will be very close so I'm not really worried about this standard deviation to be picky about stdv dot s for sample or dot p for population you can just type stdv that should be good enough now to calculate the value um, I'm trying to find a similar value to this point and uh, if if this point comes from a normal distribution what kind of value would be that's what I'm trying to find here so I can use this rank position as a probability so I can say equal norm dist, 
um, I think I have to do norm inverse because I'm trying to find a value from a probability position, percentile position. So this is the probability, comma, this mean, I'm going to use this again and again for this all probability calculation, this value calculation. So I'm going to freeze that. Then comma, the standard deviation, and then close the parentheses. So this will give me the value. Uh, I didn't freeze that. Let's freeze that. Then copy. So this would be the value if data set is normally distributed instead of this value. Now I have a data set from expected normal using this mean and standard deviation and I have this observed data set. So if I can plot them, if they're normally distributed then they should make a one-to-one -one relationship, a straight line with a slope of one. Let's plot that XY scattered and see what we find. So, this is where we are. So, to me, they look um, uh, very close to a um, normal uh, distribution, uh, very close to a, um, a state line. In theory, if about 80-85% data falls on the state line, then we can say, it's uh, normally distributed uh, now so I would say this data set is normally distributed now I can name this axis to um, so that it makes sense uh, for us so along the y-axis I have the carbon dioxide emission data carbon dioxide emission level and along the x-axis I have the okay this one is let's double check which one is that okay so this is the expected value carbon dioxide emission level expectation from a normal distribution And then this one is my observed value collected in the field. Values of CO2 emission. So this looks um, a normal uh, distribution. Uh, now, I would like to show you a few different things. Uh, many softwares, um, you know, different software uses uh, this uh, differently. Uh, I would like to show you what happened in Minitab. So let's copy this data set. Um, so that's the Minitab. This is a different data set. Um, and it, in Minitab, it's plotting percentile in the uh, tick value of the data set. Now, let's do copy that. Uh, no, I don't want to set that. So copy that carbon dioxide data in Minitab and see uh, what it does. So go to carbon dioxide. Let me go here. Minitab, so copy. Now in Minitab, we can go is, uh, stat, graph, and then probability plot this. And then we can do the probability plot, this observed carbon dioxide values. And you can see what Minitab is doing, it is plotting percentage um, against the observed uh, carbon dioxide value. Uh, this percentile comes from a normal distribution. So if the data is normally distributed, it should fall uh, on a state line. Now let's check with SAS. So this is SAS. Uh, let's copy that carbon dioxide data here. Uh, let's see what it produced. Uh, I don't need this title or graphs on. 
So this is SAS. Let's run this and see what I find in SAS. Now, you look at that, this one is a cumulative distribution. This one is normal distribution. SAS is doing um, this axis as a expectation from a normal distribution and this axis for that uh, values, observed values. However, SAS is converting everything within percentile. So what it is doing basically is calculating probability associated with these values, these values, and also calculating probability associated with these values. So, and then they are plotting the probability. So different, different software does it differently. Um, however, uh, what we need to do here is to make sure that we compare some kind of expectation from the normal and the observed values. And in theory, if they're normally distributed, then they should look exactly the, um, you know, fall exactly on the same line and uh, create some kind of one-to-one -one correlation. So that's it about the PP plot.